So today I wanted to share this um, this Clog the Opponent's Rose deck I was using. I didn't use it too much. It was just a bit of fun in between using my regular decks. It's I think it's too polarizing for me to use very often. It's the type of deck where you either win or you lose really hard. And I'm not the biggest fan of those. But some people are, and I wanted to share this with you in case this is the type of thing you like. So we're playing Overwhelming Hunger. We're going to play Haunt and Oniromancy. The reason for this is we need Haunt round one. You really want Haunt round one until we secure round one because we need a long round three. Without a long round three, this isn't going to work. So we're going to be playing these two to win the round one. Now the goal of this deck, we're going to skip around in this uh, a little bit. The goal of the deck is really on the Noon Wraith, right? A Death Wish spawn two rats in a random enemy row. You want to make as many Noon Wraiths as you need to fill up their rows completely so they can't play cards. Now for that purpose, and then once you play enough Noon Wraiths, you activate the Ritual Sacrifice, and you trigger all the Death Wishes of your Noon Wraiths, and you fill up all the rows. It gives your opponent a bunch of points, but as long as they can't remove them, then you're fine, because they lose. Because they just can't play the cards in their hand. So we have a Yggrin. Again, we need to secure a long round three. If they win round one or you don't draw a haunt, Yggrin with an overwhelming hunger charge is a good way to get a lot of points and maybe force a force them out and take the win in the round. Playing Cave Troll because a lot of people are playing, well, a good number of people I've been playing are playing like Heat Wave and Invocation if they're playing Nilfgaard. They have removal cards. And if they remove one of your big finishers, so like they, play, they say they have five cards in their hand they can't play, right? They're going to discard the four units first and save a removal card. If they remove one of your big finishers, then you could still lose if you don't have enough points. And you don't always go, um, you don't always get to win round one, although that certainly is the goal. The other option here is Gusty Warp to consume all of the rats as a bigger finisher. I want to try out the Cave Troll first, see how it was, think about the Gusty Warp. And I'm trying this out for now. We have Karanthir. I was finding that I didn't have enough Noon Wraiths sometimes when I was making like prototypes versions of this deck before I went in and uh, decided on a version I was going to test for a little bit. And there were too many Nilfgaard players when I was playing. I'm not sure why everyone was playing Soldier Nilfgaard. I mean, I'm sure not everyone was, but there's a lot of Soldier Nilfgaard, so I was getting all my Noon Wraiths locked. So I put in a Caranthir, and it ended up being enough. Um, but then I was testing, it was enough Noon Wraiths then. We have Osro. Consume the grin, obviously, and then we have Goliath, another large point swing card. We have Wispus Tribute. We need Wispus as another searcher for our Ritual Sacrifice. It can also get us our Parasites or our Natural Selections if we need removal. And then we have Operator. Operator gives us another Noon Wraith. Also gives the opponent a Noon Wraith. Then we have Parasite for removal. Jotun's our big finisher. You give them all the rats, then you play Jotun. It's like 17 to 25, maybe 30. It's a whole bunch of points. And this is a card you want to protect with your Cave Troll. And it's going to be in the different row from the um, than the Azra if we play in the same round, right? One's melee, one's range. So you put the Cave Troll in the melee row, even if you have the uh, Yagrin, or the Azra. And then there's Slizzers for Consumes. You can play in the Consumes, Barghests, Barbagazis. I wanted to use Barbagazis in a Barghest or some combination of those, but I didn't have the points because there's so many mandatory cards in the deck. And I wanted to try out, um, so I decided to go with Slizzards, basically. And I wanted to try out Harpy Egg with Urn of Shadows. Because you could use like uh, Night Wraiths and stuff instead, and you could save a couple points and add different consumes. But I wanted to try out Harpy's Eggs and Urn of Shadows for a bit of fun. And then there's the Noon Wraiths, which are important. The Foglets give you a lot of value. The Arc Force is in your deck, and there's an Andrago Warrior. But I want to change the Andrago Warrior for a Natural Selection so you have more consumes. But you don't need that many, right? Because you only want to trigger an Arcuspor, two Foglets, and two Harpy Eggs with your consumes, right? And then Haunt gives you a lot of ways to consume too. So you don't need that many consumes, we just need them in the same hand. And uh, that's the deck. Let's see how it does. So our first opponent is going to be Uprising. This should be pretty good, because I think, um, well, usually they're playing the Northern Realm's Witchers, and they usually fill their own rows up, which is kind of what we want. Especially if... What I've noticed is sometimes a lot of, pe well, a lot of people just assume you're playing Vi here. And they might play to uh, against that. So to say. As far as our hand goes, we have our Haunt and our Ritual Sacrifice and Oniromancy. This is a very, very good starting hand. We'll just keep everything, basically. We have our big swing cards. We have our Goliath. We have our Osrael. We can Oniromancy off the Ugrin. We have our Haunt, which we'll just start with right here to make sure we take the round. And we have our um, Ritual Sacrifice already. 
Now, people react differently to this. Some of them will just try really hard to win the round, and some will just play cards to try and either gain carryover or play their weakest cards. This guy looks like he's might contend, we'll see. We have Urn of Shadows here to trigger our Death Wish, either for our... well, not for our... You can use it for Archispore, but I really wanted to try it out with Harpy Egg, because the Harpy Egg summons a 6, so it's a 9 for 6 if you get the Death Wish, which you pretty much always get the Death Wishes, and then Urn of Shadows gives you 6 and six points from triggering it, which I wanted to try out and see how good that was, if I liked it or not. He's got two Griffin Witchers here. That's uh, a little more than I'd like, so I think we're going to go into our Wispish here and remove one of them. With one of our natural selections. I'm going to go Harpy Egg first. Let's just do Harpy Egg first. And then if we need the others, we'll do it. There's the Inner Shadows we're talking about. Six points on the egg. We'll consume the egg again, get another six points. And then we have Vargas to consume our Night Wraith when we want to. We could have done it here. But I'd rather not. Because I want to see what he's going to do. We won't want to consume something else with Vargas, like our Yagrin. Instead of using a leader charge if we need to play him. That's the real reason we didn't consume him here. Now we'll go for the Wispess and we'll remove one of these. Basically here we want to win the round. We're up 31, which should be enough. I think he's just playing cards to pass. I would expect him to pass here, and no matter, and we'll just pass next round. We have, we have no reason to bleed him. We really don't want to bleed with this deck. Okay, he's going to actually continue here. So we will probably go for our Yggrin here, or we can play Goliath. I think Yggrin's better. Let's see what he does. He gets his Witchers, he's going to transform one. No big deal. Uh, let's see. Goliath. It's a solid choice here, but it would be at 5, or um, Yggren would have 5 armor here, right, because we only have 5 cards in our hand, and we're going to consume him then, because if he has, what's it called, uh, boiling oil, then we don't need to consume him. We don't have like 39, I don't, I guess we'll do it anyway. The point is, if he has boiling oil, boiling oil takes off all 5 armor and it kills us. So there's really no reason to uh, not use the Consume Charge here on him. Later Charge, I mean. As we just want to make sure we win the round. So yeah, we're up by 42. Normally this would be a huge overextension, but here we just care about securing this round and going to round 3 with 10 cards. Or as many cards as possible. Plus now we have our Yugen set up for the later rounds. Uh, sometimes when you pass right here, in general, if you just drive past round 2, they'll drop a Squirrel and banish your Yugen. That's whatever happens. Okay, there's our operator. We want that, and we have two of our noon rays. This is perfect. I think we have every card we want for round three here. Except maybe Cave Troll. Cave Troll would be nice, though. We didn't trigger our, uh, we did trigger our Arcus Boys right there. So I think this is everything we want for our setup. This should be a good example of how the deck works. Alright, now we just need him to play something and pass. Hopefully he'll do so quickly, so we don't uh, have to keep waiting so long. I'm not really sure what he could be deciding on. But hopefully he will do it soon, whatever he's picking. And... Well, one will hope. We can always hope. Kind of feels like this isn't taking longer the entire last round, which I know is not true, but kind of just feels like it sometimes the opponent doesn't play any cards. Okay, you're running out of time to actually do a turn. Can you just do something? Okay, yeah, just play that. That's fine. Then pass, go to round three. And we'll show how this deck works here in a minute. Hopefully he has... I forget his name. Guy who spawns Witchers with resupply at the end of each turn. Although the Adrenaline will not be starting until hopefully his rows are already filled. But any of the cards that spawn Witcher students in each row are great for us as opposed to being good for him. We have a Slizzard and a Foglet. We want Caranthir and Cave Trill. I forgot about Caranthir. We want those two, so... Honestly, we don't want the Foglets for this round, because if we kill the lowest, we can get rid of the Rat to let him play cards again, and that's not great. And we have Slizzards, but nothing we want to consume with, so we just won't keep them, I don't think. And then we have a... Yeah, Natural Selection's fine. So here goes our opponents. 
And let's see what he does. Or not. Yeah. We're missing Cave Trouble. We have an Iromancy for him, so that's fine. It's a good target. We want to get these... So here's the thing. Against Nilfgaard and such, sometimes you just want open cave drills to prevent them from locking all of your moon rates. But in this case, we don't have that issue, so we can just start with the moon rates right away if we want. Okay, there's his big 12 play. That's fine. Now we'll go with the Operator. Operator will give each of us a noon rate. It's an even point exchange, we both get 6. But it gives us another noon rate to work with. And his noon rate is basically dead. Like, he's not going to be able to get any value out of that, other than the 6 points, right? So obviously at this point he knows what we're doing. In round 1, sometimes they might think you've really bad by hand, although having that bad a hand is kind of crazy. Okay, we're gonna... Are you gonna kill our noon rate? I don't think that helps him in any way, but whatever. Crant threw out another one. See how this one goes. Take it down. Maybe he thinks we're going to create copies of it once it's on the field, but it's not what we're doing. He also might just want to get his Prince on Saith's value out before we fill all of his rows up. Maybe he thinks he can get enough points out ahead of time. His Lyrian Scytheman could be pretty big here. If he has any way to boost his rows. Uh, let's see, our opponent's a little confused. That's fine. We're just going to go for another Noon Wraith right after this, and then another Noon Wraith, and then... Or Ritual Sacrifice, there's nothing otherwise you can do. Oh, one thing you want to make sure though, is you want to play Ritual Sacrifice BEFORE Goliath, in case they have a big card you pull out of their deck. Just keep that in mind. Because that would obviously not be fantastic. But if they get all filled up, the rows are filled up, or the Goliath will go off, it's whatever. There's a Beringer. He's going to be a 9, we're not going to remove the uh, guy next to him. Opponent losing connection. Then it's back. So yeah, we just play on the Noon Wraith. This part is kind of annoying because you know exactly what you're going to play, right? You're going to play the Operator, Granthier, Noon Wraith, Noon Wraith, Ritual Sacrifice, right? So you're going to play those like immediately with basically no no other cards to be considered there unless there's something you really have to remove. Like you can kill any things that could destroy their own units or something. But then you just have to wait for the opponent to make up their mind about what they're doing. So this part of the game is a little slow. But to be fair, that's just because of what we're playing here. Target practice, that's great for us. It spawns a guy on each row. Now, ideally, we want to go when he has five. We can activate all the new rights when he's at five on each row. So we can fill them all, right? So here, we he's at five on the ranged row. We fill that here. We can only fill the use leader charge here. So he has one more unit in the play, right? If they have five on each row, you get just like fill it up all the way. If they're at 4, they might have a space left over, but there was no way to avoid that here, because we don't have any more um, Noon Wraiths. I'd rather just make him play his last unit now. Okay, so there we go. He's all filled up. We'll go into Cave Troll here, put him on the melee row. So we're going to put Goliath in Cave Troll's row, just because. And there's no way he gets anything out of his deck, so he's the first discard. At this point, we're down by 29, but that's easy enough for us to come back from. Those natural selection here, making sure we don't kill anything for obvious reasons. Opponent lost connection again. Okay, they're actually back. Thought they might have left that time. So we have Goliath for 10, Jotun for like 20 something, Ozra for 14. These Northern Realm decks tend to play a. Uh, well, what I've noticed is the ones I've been playing play a Yurden over an actual removal card. They play one of the Geralts because they're what you're synergized with the deck. They play a Geralt or. Less commonly, Axie or Igni over playing Heatwave. So I'm pretty sure there's not going to be any removal cards from him. Go into our Osrael here, consume our Yggrin, and then Joe is going to come down for a whole bunch. What do we have? We have 8. He has 18. That's 10, 20. He'll be 23. There's no way he's coming back from that. And this will be game. So yeah, this is a perfect example of how the deck works. Go into round 3, fill up the rows with the rats. They have to discard their cards, and then you win. GG. Right into our second game here. Going up against Imposter. Okay, this could be a problem. The reason why is because they have a lot of locks. If they lock out all the Noon Wraiths, uh, you just lose. Because that's our deck strategy. So we're just going to have to hope he doesn't do that. Imposter is very problematic. The other thing that the Imposter is problematic against is uh, Yugrin. 
and Goliath. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. Well, yeah. Any of the big cards they can just create a copy of can be a problem. Not necessarily Yigrin, but Goliath really is a big one. Alright, let's see what they have here. We have Urn of Shadows. We do not have Oniromancy or our, uh, what's it called? Haunt. This is a problem. This is one of the biggest issues in the deck. If you don't have those, you just have to go all out to secure round one. So we're just going to start with Yigrin here. Try and open as many points as we can. We don't have Azrael either, so it's just going to be on these guys. Poison? Okay, we can consume that. It's fine. So, Andrega Warrior is an option, or Leader Charge. I want to get two consumes out of Andrega Warrior. So even though we would gain a point from using it on the Yigrin because it was an Insectoid, and it would spawn a little drone next to it, I'd rather just go for the Leader Charge, because I want to do a double consume with the Andrega Warrior with this hand on both of the uh, Harpy Eggs. Or on the Foglet and the Harpy Egg. This is our only consume in our hand. He's gonna go for an armored El Elba, armored cavalry. Good. We want to get we want to get rid of as many of these as possible. So you can't lock our um, noon rates in round three. Just play this. If he has a Yurden or some kind of row reset, which is just Yurden, honestly, for him, I want him to use it now. So okay, Vincent's have come down for 19. That's a big swing and that's a big problem. We're gonna have to try. Go for Goliath here, probably. We're going to set this Harpy Egg up and this Warrior coming up for the consumes, but we were probably going to need Goliath this round. And honestly, it's all we can spare, right? Because we need the Noon Wraith, we need the Operator. Our only advantage here is if he thinks we're playing Vi, he might go to a longer round 3, counting on his engines to be our pure point slam. Alright, let's see, here we go. Double consume, get the Fog, get the Egg. Big swing there. And we'll start getting some points. The, we're going to play Goliath next, hope he leaves. We can't afford any cards after Goliath. This is all part of our endgame plan. So this is it. We're going to play Goliath and pass. Our hope is that he thinks we're playing by and doesn't push us here. Although, honestly, he should know we're not. Although, most people just instantly assume Overwhelming Hunger is by, And if it's not by, they think it might be some succubus deck. And the versus those, hopefully we... Uh, he thinks we're playing one of those instead. There's a boost. Okay, he's up a couple. We're gonna go Goliath. We want to win. We're gonna play this. So we get our last turn of fog value out also. And hopefully we can just take the round here. Not having Haunt was pretty bad. Okay, there's a Fangs of the Empire. He's gonna poison us. So we're gonna have to pass. We're gonna have to pass anyway. But this tells me he's gonna actually take the round too. Probably going to deploy out the uh, cupbearer to a poison on us. That's okay. So he's going to have Masquerade Bull around 3. And he's going to have a leader charge. That's not good. Although he has no way of killing his own units. And the Masquerade Bull spawns a lot. But the problem is, he could be playing Invocation. He could be playing Invocation or Heat Wave. I've noticed a lot, most, I don't know why, how many times I say this, but whenever I'm playing a scenario deck, the other deck's most likely to actually have the uh, Heat Wave in their own deck, as they're thinking about it. That's my theory, at least. So we have Ritual Sacrifice, we'll put it back. Um, yeah. The reason I put Ritual Sacrifice back is because if he knows what we're doing, he'll push this round, and actual sacrifice will do nothing for us. To like, actually do nothing. And I'm concerned he's going to push here. I want a chance to actually win this round. Because if we have Ritual Sacrifice in our hand here, and he's pushing us to win the game because he knows what we're playing, there's absolutely no way we can win. It's just a card that does nothing. We really do need it for our end game, but we can't risk having it here, is the, what it comes down to. Okay, so we can go for our leader charge on the Arcus score. We're going to just leave the Arcus score and save our charge. I think we're going to save the charge. The leader charge gives you an extra activation of a Moonwraith in round 3. Right, so you play the 
Ritual Sacrifice, activate them all. If you need more, you can Leader Charge another one. Or two if you save both charges, but I usually use one of the Leader Charges by round three. Alright, Karanthir is very nice. Ogniromancy is nice. Slizzard is nice. Uh, let's see, we don't need this Slizzard actually. We don't have any Death Wishes. There's another Noon Wraith. This is looking pretty good. We're gonna Oniromancy out Ritual Sacrifice. We could Oniromancy or draw again, trying to get into our Haunt. But we really just need to go as fast as possible for this new Wraith setup. So the reason we're playing Cave Troll first here is because we know he's playing Locks. He's playing... he's going to be playing Masquerade Ball, which means he has been Borlehem Hunters. So they have Locks. He's already played one Elbow Armored Calvary, so that means he's probably saying he's playing a second. So he has three Locks. He locks three Running Knights, we can't use our strategy. So we have to open with our Cave Troll. He's already played his Vincent too, which is good. Okay, so now we just go into the Unirates as quickly as possible. This is the reason I'm playing Cave Troll in the deck, by the way. It's just the, in, I've been playing a significant amount of Nilfgaard with a lot of locks. And not necessarily with this deck, even before when I was thinking about making this video. In the previous games I was playing, there's just a lot of it. And it's if they lock it, you it's such a hard boss. You just can't do anything. Okay, he's going to lock and create a Cave Troll. That's fine, our Parasite can hit our own guys. Vanmar's gonna destroy our Cave Troll, okay. We're gonna get some locks on us here, but we should get enough of our... He's played one, we should be okay. Because we're gonna be able to get up to four. He probably has three locks, although if he had a Elbow Armor Cavalry Mishand, or a second Van Morlehem Hunter, we're gonna rely on him having put them back. Since... There's really nothing we can do outside of playing Cave Troll first against the Lux. There's no Purifies here. He's going to play his um, Masquerade Ball for it earlier too, right? So we have, even if he locks on each turn after Masquerade Ball, we'll still activate three Noon Wraiths, right? Two with Natural Sacrifice, one with our Leader Charge. Okay, there goes the Roger into Masquerade Ball, as we knew was coming. The Masquerade Ball is here. Now we want to get another Noon Wraith out. Let's drop that. I imagine Van Morlehem Hunter is going to be coming down next. He's going to lock one, poison something. And then he's going to go... Well, hopefully he just doesn't have a second one. That's basically what this comes down to. Usurper Emperor. Oh, that's good for us. He's going to fill his rose up more. We might be able to actually get... And that's not a lock. So I think we'll be able to get him here. Uh, let's see. He's got four. If he steals these back, he's got five in each row. That's perfect for us. He should not, uh, well, I guess he has no choice. But this is where he gets locked, right? When I ran scenes, ritual sacrifice, leader charge one, we give him eight rats. He has eight missing spots. Four on each row, which is exactly what we want. Ritual sacrifice. Go here. Leader charge on one of these guys, the smallest one. And there we go. He's now locked out. Our issue is he could have Invocation, right? He could be playing Invocation. If he is playing Invocation, that's our issue. But I don't think we can generate enough points to overcome being invocation Uh, let's see. And he's going last. We'll go for another Noon Wraith. We'll just play slow for now. We could open straight Jotun here, and then just have it be as big as possible. But if he has his removal, he'll remove it. What we really hope is that if he has removal, well, if he doesn't have an answer to Jotun, we win. If he does have an answer to Jotun, we lose, but if we can get him to play early on Azrael and he has it, we might still win. So we win the game unless he has an invocation and hits Jotun, right? The best way to avoid him hitting Jotun with his invocation is to have him hit Azrael with it. Because either way, if Lusty has invocation, we win. As, as obviously uh, Yotun would be worth more points if we played him first here. But our only way to beat an invocation. Okay, that's going to be zero for him. Is the only way to beat an invocation is to have him hit Azrael over Yotun. If he doesn't have it, and if he doesn't have it, we we'll. win. I'm concerned he does have it, but he played. Let's see. Yeah, if he does have it, he can search it out with the, uh, I imagine he's playing Coup de Gras. So this will find out. It, 
Obviously, he probably won't. If he has it in case, he probably won't hit it on the Azrael. But it's our only hope is if he has it, if he does do that. Discards. Go into Jotun, and we find out if we win or not. It's only like 15 or 17 or something like that. 17. What does he have? Who to grow? We expected that. Now the question is, is he playing a removal card? Oh, okay, he is. So he wins. GG. Well played. It was a good effort. Good effort. Looking back on that last game, we would have won if we kept the Drill Sacrifice round 2, so we could Onirancy out on round 3, but I was maybe overly concerned with the round 2 push, because he could have definitely beaten us round 2 if we had your Drill Sacrifice. Maybe I expect more people to push round 2 than actually do, but if he was, if he knew what we were doing, that would have been his place to play round 2, because that was just a free win versus our deck. And I kind of expected him to know what we were playing and actually play into that but he didn't. Oh well. We're going against Ursine Ritual here. Yeah, so basically in the last game, he played suboptimally. I think you really want to play round two against the um, Rat Clog deck. And then round three, you want to... Well, you won't... Their win condition's gone if you play round two and bleed them at all, or just play it. So yeah, I think he should have gone for that. Okay, we do two Arcus Spores here. So yeah, last game he played suboptimally, I think. And then that resulted in us losing, which is pretty weird, but... It happens. Brock for our Hunter. So yeah, we made a choice based on what we thought his optimal play would be. But he didn't do that optimal play, so our choice turned out to be bad. What, do you, what can you do? It happens. We'll just hit that with a quick little um, four-point removal. Get rid of that. Brock for Hunters could be an issue, because he can remove his own guys with those. We're going to have to save our removal cards and get rid of those. Now, it's probably Lippy. Lippy's a good matchup here, I think. As long as we get the round one win. Because if we can get the round one win and go to round three, Lippy plays a whole bunch of units on its own real quick with Ceres. Okay, there's a snowdrop. So, yeah, it basically confirms it's Lippy at this point. Now, we have two Arcus Spores in our hand, which is really bad. Uh, Really trying to draw into Haunt. We have our Nyromancy for it, so that's fine. And we have Yggdrasil. We'll, we'll play Yggdrasil and then Onirancy on Haunt. It should give us enough points. I don't think he's going to be able to remove Yggdrasil. He's not going to commit Heart of Terror on it now to kill it. Because he's going to save the Heart of Terror for the Azrael, right? And if he hits any damage into this, we'll consume it. Okay, Heat Wave. Sure. Heat Waved it. That's fine. Now we're going to play Haunt. Because we know he has no answer to it. Perfect. Nyromancy. Uh, we could set up a Slizzard or something first, but no, I think I think we just want the Haunt. I'm thinking we want Goliath, too. I think we do set up the Slizzard. He's at 12 right now. We don't need to slam the Haunt. So we can wait a turn and set this up. Maybe bait out some removal, because if he removes this, we save the Desert Banshee, which is an engine. Gives us a couple more points. He doesn't remove this. This also might make him think we're playing Vi and may, might make him play suboptimally against this deck. Coral, sure. We're going to take 4 damage on our Slizzer. That's not too bad. I can, do a great deal more for you. can we beat him with Haunt still? We have Arcus 4 and Arcus 4 for Death Wishes. But that's it. Uh, This is really not great. Just the two Arcus Force thing's a problem. Because we have no other death wishes. We're down by 33. Okay, we're just gonna pass. We're gonna pass. We played Slizzard. Hopefully he thinks we're playing Vi. That's basically it. From what we've played so far, we could very well be a Vi deck. And Vi is much more common than this is. So we'll just hope he's going with that line of thought. Is that we're playing something or not. The Slizzard might make him bait him into thinking that too. Okay, there's Haunt. If he... He's Lippy. Does he play this round? We'll see. Okay, we got rid of one of the Arcus so That's good. This hand, we're missing Noon Ray, but we have the we have three Death Wishes. We don't need all of them. Uh, we'll put Osro back. He's no use now without the without having gotten Goliath and him having banished Argrin. I mean, not no use, but 
not great value. Let's see what he wants to go for. If he starts playing this round, we're just going to play Haunt. Okay, we're just going to play Haunt, I think. We need him to leave the round. 15. Slam the Haunt. I don't really care where Rodas goes in. Put it down. Alright. Now he hopefully will pass. We can get a lot of value out of this. We can go... We want Archospor, Harpy, and... Foglet, don't really care. We definitely want Archospor to go off, though. And then Harpy's Egg's worth more than Foglet and faster. But if he looks like he's going to play past 7, the Foglet's better. We'll just see what he does. He might just pass. As we look like a very standard Vi deck to him still, especially having played the... Playing this Lizard round 1 was actually pretty smart. I didn't think about it as much at the time. That was definitely a good choice. Trying to make him think we're playing something we're not. Now, what would a Vi deck play here? We play Foglet, I think. Yeah, I think they have Foglet more so than the others. We'll just go with the Foglet and the Vargast. We'll consume that. And we'll just pretend like we're a Vi deck, saving up all of our Vi's for round three. Then if he plays another one here, we'll play the Archispore, which might be a little weird, but we might still be able to make him think we're playing Vi. Because he hasn't seen anything telling yet. Though, like, certain that we're not. We'll play our second, uh... Okay, there's a Savage Bear. Alright, we're going to give up when we're not playing right here, but we're just going to slam a bunch of points then. It's time for the Archospore. He's going in. Damage, damage, damage. Okay, Archospore. And we'll consume that with the Bargast. Consume it. Well, actually, we'll consume Yeah, we'll consume it. And then 20. We're bleeding. We'll pass. Still nothing too weird here. We want him to... we could have gone ahead, like, going up a card, but I didn't want to, right? We could have used the leader charge to, like, pressure him this round, but I didn't want to pressure him. I wanted him to leave and make him think he was getting out at a good time. So we'll play this Fogla. Okay, we're gonna go to round three. We're gonna be at nine cards, which is pretty close to ten. Is, he's going last, which is a problem, normally, but there's no way he's playing Heat Wave or any of those big removal cards. He's going to have Heart of Terror for his big removal. If his rows are filled, he can't do anything with it. Okay, this is looking real good. Really good. We've got our Oniromancy, or whatever we want. We have our Jotun, we have our Cave Troll. We have one of our Newton Knights. We really want another. Osriel still is not great. We'll just get rid of him. Uh, Harpy Eggs. We want Operator. Still. And another Noon Wraith. If we draw... Yeah, we want one of those. Let's put back an egg. I think we have two leader charges left still, so we can activate them both. Oh, just going back. Goliath, okay. We should be able to get enough harpies. Or not harpies. Noon Wraiths here. Open... We'll open Cave Troll. Maybe. Yeah, let's open Cave Troll. We're going to have to wait a couple... Uh, the reason we want to open... Well, the reason we're opening Cave Troll here... If you want him to, if he has anything scary, to play it now. Basically, if he has a Jenga Fett or a Diregory of Vol, I've seen them playing more Diregory of Vols than Jenga Fett. Since we don't have access to all of our Noon Wraiths, we want him to use those locks early. and We have to protect our Noon Wraiths. If we got one locked here, it's a big problem. Actually, normally it's not that big a problem, right? Because we can only get to three. And that includes using our Oniromancy. Uh, I think we're at the current here before we play Noon Wraith. I think we own Iromancy for Operator first. Operator is really good because it gives them another... It fills up one of their row slots in addition to giving you a Noon Wraith to fill theirs up with, right? So now he knows what we're doing. Which he's going to play a Saris very quickly, so he gets all the points from it, I think. I think that's what he'll do. Because he wants to make sure he gets all the uh, Shield Maidens out, right? He wants to make sure he gets full value from it, even if that's not the most points for those rows, those spots on his rows. When you're playing against this, you want to consider which of your cards gives you the most points for their spot on your row, because your rows can get filled. So these are all fours. He might have something more valuable than a four. It might have been better for him just not play Saris with or not activate the shield movements. Although it totally depends on what's in his hand. These um lippy decks tend to run a fair amount of a uh, Removal cards, at least I've seen them, ones I've played have. 
like um, gutting slashes, some spores in there. You know what I'm saying? They have some of those cards. So if he if he starts discarding, we're not safe because he might have a lot of cards he can use. There's Burna, and if they do have those removal cards, they have plenty of draw to get to them. Okay, so he's gonna go frack for. Okay, I'm not sure that's the best choice. We can wait. Uh, let's see. Play this. Oh, that was a mistake. We could have. All right, so we could have ritual sacrificed, then it consumed and filled his range drill. All right, that was a misplay. I'll point that out here. We should have played ritual sacrifice and used the leader charge. If we lose, it's because we made a mistake there. I was thinking we needed three, but I forgot what the leader charges for a second there. We could get up to four if we needed them right there. Okay, he's at 58. 61. Yeah. We should have gone for this last turn. It would have saved us nine points. Although, to be fair, we probably still have enough. We have a leader charge for Harpy Egg. We have a leader charge just for three points. And let's see what we're going to do. We'll just play Jotun first. We still have our Cave Troll, so he's safe. He'll be a nice big 25. And now there's he'll know at this point, unless he has some way to get to our Jotun, he's going to lose. Discard again. Perfect. Go into our Goliath. The nice thing is that you don't have to be worried about row resets. Well, the big thing, like, you're always worried about Yurden when these big boost decks, right? But he can't play Yurden because he has no space. So we actually don't have to worry about him at all. The only thing we have to worry about from him is Heat Wave. And he can't Heat Wave our Jotun while there's a Cave Troll. We'll just play Harpy Egg. I'll just put that in the. Oh, I'll put a different row here. Make sure we get our spawned guy in. And then we're up by 11. He will have to discard again. We'll play another card. I mean, at this point, his only hope is that we have Curse of Corruption in our hand and we kill ourselves, but let's be real, that's not going to happen. We'll just go here for plus 3 on this Harpy. Well, we could do on something else. Now I like the Harpy. We get the injury. Yeah. There's nothing else that gives us any benefit. Let's just do this. And then we'll play our Parasite. Probably on the one strength. Noon Wraith. Okay. There's no reason for to pretend to be There's no reason to uh, debate this so much. What are you doing, Karanth there? Actually, it doesn't matter. Where it doesn't matter because you can't play Yurden. Discard your last card. And we will have another win for the deck. Okay, yeah. So this is how the deck works. There was a mistake there. You have to keep in mind how many leader charges you have. Because you can activate... Say you want four death wishes of noon rates. You don't always need four noon rates. You can deal with like three and a leader charge. I just overlooked that we still have two leader charges left. Since that's pretty unusual. Usually I only have one. Well, pretty much all the time I only have one. Well, that's the deck. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. In conclusion, what do I think? I think it's pretty good. Now, there are definitely some things that you can change here, and things I would like to change. So the first thing is, I'm not sure Cave Troll's... Cave Troll's not really necessary, I don't think. So you can take out Cave Troll. And Karanthir? You don't always need Karanthir either, that either, because you don't always need the extra Noon Wraiths. I liked having it because of how many Nilfgaard people I was playing that would lock them. But if you're not playing up against a lot of Nilfgaard, just take these guys out and you can put something else in. And then, as far as the other cards... I think Slizzard can be replaced by um, Fargus. Take a look at this. I think this is a better substitution here. And then I think you'd want to take probably one less Natural Selection, one less of these, and then the Drago Warrior, probably take a second one. This deck was... I tested this deck less than I test most decks when I was making it before making a video about it. Just because it's not something I want to play a lot of. Because it's, it's unique and fun for a little bit. But then it's just like, do you have the hand and do they have a counter? More so than most decks. See, so we have, so yeah, I think more something like this where you have, now, when I said you could take these guys out, right, so kick out Cave Troll and Tarant there if you're not playing against things that you're worried about locking too many of your guys, you can play Glusty Work, right? So you can play Glusty Work. Destroys all the use one power if each one destroyed boost self by two. The thing about this is, Glusty Warp in for a second. If you're playing up against some... If you don't have Last Say, right? 
the issue, if, it, if you don't have last say, and they have a heat wave or an invocation, you can lose a bunch of points from taking your Yotun, right? And then, or your um, Azrael. If you consume, if you destroy all the one strengths to give them options to play a card, they can play Geralt, a, a Geralt, particularly Yurden, right? So, there's a lot of situations I found, although to be fair, I didn't play that many games with this deck before making this video, and that where I didn't go last, if I played Glusty Warp, pretty sure a couple of them had Yurden. You can't check the last card in the graveyard, unless because the game ends. So I don't know if that's what they're holding on to, because usually they pass with like one card in their hand or something, so you don't know what it is. Well, I suspect several of them had Yurden because they're playing Witcher decks. And if you destroy them all, you can get Yurden. Now, if you want to go all in on making sure you go, if you have last say in the round, that's not a problem, but it's just for me, for me, I prefer the Caranthir and such. And then as far as the other bronze cards, these can be whatever you want, right? So normally you'd play like, um, here's another option for you. It's probably, probably a little bit better as you go with the Andrega Larvas, because the Andrega Larvas instead of the eggs, the Andrega Larvas are really good with the Haunt. And then you can go for the, uh, take out Larva for a second, go for the Tactical Advantage for your Stratagem because it gives you more points. And then, so like this, and you have... You have a bunch of cards. You can go for the, uh, what's it called? The Night Wraith is a good choice here, because we took out a couple things. So we go for Night Wraiths. Good bronzes. You can change the bronzes out however you want. Uh, the Foglet's good, but if you get later on, you don't really need it. And you can cut the Arcospores if you don't want to do the thinning with them. It's all up to you, right? Because if you remove these, you have like a 9. You can change the points around, or however you want. But I like having them. It's all up to you in the end, just like every deck is, right, in the end. It's all up to what you want to play. I like having the thinning. I like having the two Arcospores. So that's just the version I'd use. Anyway, those are all the changes. Pick what you want. Thanks for watching.